We were four artists who wanted to have more control over the kind of comics that we were making. So we created a business structure to protect our artistic intent. Uh, a lot of things have been laid on top of Milestone, uh, that it was comics for black people, that it was an attempt by the man to hold down the burgeoning uh, black comic movement, which doesn't seem to have really gone anywhere since Milestone left. Uh, if we were holding them down, we did a really good job because we're now holding them down without existing. But um, basically, it was a bunch of guys who liked comics, who had had a certain level of success in the mainstream, and wanted to take some of that and, and kind of make our own projects. I mean, we still enjoyed working on mainstream Marvel and DC comics, but we wanted to make our own thing and control it and, and have total say over it. What I will say is what Milestone got out of the deal was distrib uh, distribution pretty much unmatched by any other black company ever. Uh, we did somewhere between 250 and 300 comics, which is probably equal to the output of every other black publisher combined. Uh, we sold a lot more comics than anybody else, you know, just from the, from the weight of being in the stores every week. We maintained total creative control. Uh, the deal that we had with DC, and DC completely stood by it, was they had the option to not publish. They didn't have the option to change anything. Uh, you know, we published a lot of stuff that made them very uncomfortable, which always sort of amused me because they weren't as uncomfortable when they dealt with those topics. But they were dealing with those topics from their point of view and from a, uh, from a perspective that they were comfortable with. We were dealing with it from several different perspectives that they had never heard before and it made them nervous and they didn't want to be the guys publishing the book that was wrong somehow and they didn't understand it. So they were extra jumpy. But they, uh, you know, they lived up to it. Milestone was a great inevitable next step that you would have enough successful writers and artists in the comic book business that they could put together a collective and publish their own line of characters. And they were a super talented group. Dwayne McDuffie and Dennis Cowan are fantastic storytellers. And the, the characters they've created will have great longevity. I know they're not being published now, but that doesn't matter. Those characters are great, and those characters are for all time. And when you look at the success of Static Shock, when it got turned into an animated series, that animated series was gigantically successful. And it was successful without having a toy line or any licensing support. It got... Um, you know, it wasn't a Disney property, it wasn't a Nickelodeon property, yet it had this huge audience. So I look at that as like, wow, that's enormously successful, and that will be successful again in some other medium. I look at Icon, it's a brilliant character. There were so many brilliant characters that were created uh, in that era that those characters have to come back. They have to be revisited and moved forward, and eventually they will. I, I think they were always a lot more sophisticated than their critics gave them credit for, and, and sophisticated in two ways. First of all, they showed a much greater diversity of characters. I, I know one of the big criticisms of Icon was that he was a, a black conservative. Um, and certainly if you look at it in terms of party identification or voting, yeah, that is going to be a, a a minority within a minority and, and not not really representative of, of most African Americans at all. But that isn't to say that there isn't a, a deeper conservative strain within African American culture. You know? Then I thought they were doing something unique with the icon figure in that uh, they were making him have conservative instincts and they were constantly then challenging 
that notion of conservatism. So uh, the fact that, first of all, the milestone creators recognize there's a lot of ideological diversity within the black community, and they actually write that into their comics. I, I think that shows a lot of sophistication. But then on top of that, uh, part of the interchange between Icon and Rocket is Icon is always so aware of this extra burden that is placed on him, that people will look at him not just as a superhero, but as a black superhero, and, and that the way he acts really um, fairly or not, it, it's, people are going to use that to reflect on the way blacks in general are perceived. So it, it seems to me that Milestone was always pretty savvy about these issues and was very good about writing them into the series and, and, and making them part of the dynamic of, 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 uh, of those series. Yeah, Milestone approached it in a, in a broader perspective in that they showed the complexity of different ethnicities. You know, it wasn't just, here's this guy, he's from the hood and he's got these powers and speaks in this gangster speak, but they could have characters who were Republican and who were Democrat, uh, were gay, were straight, uh, were rich or poor, uh, regardless of skin color. So they showed a diversity within ethnic groups that uh, I think most of popular culture doesn't tend to do. My biggest issue generally in writing mainstream comics is if you write a black character he represents blackness, and that's ridiculous. That's way too much, way too complex, way too much weight for any character, any single character to hold. Whereas if you write a white character, he's that guy. You know, you can be Superman, you can be Lex Luthor, but if you're black, you're all black people, good guy, bad guy, anything in between. So one of the things that we tried to do was present a range of characters, different socioeconomics, different backgrounds, uh, different ages, as, as much of a range of opinions as you can in a little tiny model of the world, not even as much range as there is in my own family, but certainly more range than we had ever seen in comics before where to that point all we had seen was black exploitation movies of the 70s filtered through white creators. But Milestone was one of the first to show, you know, there's a lot of diversity within these groups and they're not um, ethnically specific enough to ignore other groups, that there is interchange between all different ethnicities in America. And I think that was reflected more in Milestone comics. Um, characters of color would be fighting crime, um, not just crime in a specific neighborhood in Harlem. 99.9% .9 of comic book companies up to that point had been owned and run by white males. So when we came out and announced we were going to do some comics, and it was for black men, it's like, oh, okay, it's black comics. And uh, it, it's hard to fight that image. My own uh, inclination was to create comics that were more contemporary. That even though it was a fantasy world, we wanted it to look like the world we lived in. That meant all kinds of people, not just black people. I didn't want to become the black version of my criticism of mainstream comics. I wanted to create a world that had all kinds of people in it. Uh, and Milestone was characterized as being the black company. Um, people looked at who the creators were and what the focus of the first few comics were. Uh, and I think unfairly just said, all right, that's how we're going to consider them, the fans. We're looking for ways to categorize companies. And this is the company that does big guys and babes, and this is the company that does African-American characters, so hence it's the black company. Here's a problem that no one could have anticipated. I've gone to comic book stores asking for Milestone, well, we don't carry it because we didn't know how to market it. We don't, we don't get a lot of black people in here. Well, the book is multidimensional, it's not just black, and then the room goes silent. And I think people, because you go to the comic book store each week and mostly kids and teens and young adults choosing, and you've got $30 to spend and it's $5 a comic or so, people were making selections based on the covers, literally judging the book by its cover, and I think um, it led to some misconceptions. They were introducing business practices. They kept their book and they were distributed by one of the largest comic book companies in the world. Thank you if you understand that. But black, having been a black college student in the 60s and 70s, uh, even before I was a college student, there was this thing about who's more black. And that continues through the milestone when they're trying to do their pieces and independent black companies, uh, comics. who's more black as a racist still goes on. I'm stunned to say it and I'm ashamed to say it. 
Um, if you got a white company behind you, you can't be black. Um, yeah, okay, that's how you go, that's fine. But they were doing business, and they were doing big time business. Criticism from some um, African American political viewpoints was that in cooperating with DC Comics, um, they were working for the man, that there was a, a, a complicit uh, agreement to um, present certain stories in certain ways. And uh, there was no indication early on that Milestone was in any way compromised by DC Comics and their political view uh, or wanting not to have a political view. It, it did seem that they were able to produce the stories they wanted in the format they wanted. Probably the biggest, uh, the, the biggest actual fight that we had was an issue of uh, Static, who was a teenage superhero. And on the cover, he's making out with his girlfriend. There's no flesh exposed, but they're going at it pretty good. And uh, it came back that DC didn't want to publish this cover. They told me because DC Comics doesn't use sex to uh, sell their comic books. And, you know, as I'm talking to the guy, I'm, there's a big rack behind him of all the DC books that were out that month. And literally over his shoulder is a picture, it's a Legion of Superheroes cover with the uh, very attractive female uh, team member, her ass pointing at the camera. She's looking over her shoulder, sort of come him, hither and saying, we're back, you know. And I'm... <laughs> And I'm, I'm like, yeah, well, you know, compared to kissing, <laughs> it, it kind of depends, you know. So we, we kind of went back and forth over it, and I said, oh, did the condoms make you, uh, did the condoms make you nervous? Because, you know, some people think raincoats cause, uh, cause rain. So we'll, we could take the condoms out, and that wasn't it. And finally, the uh, compromise we came up with was we put the cover on the inside, and we wrapped a black heart it was like a black uh, border that was a heart and just the two faces kissing so you couldn't see that they were, you know, on a couch going at it like 15-year-olds all over America, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that was a huge, huge fight. And I think a lot of it, it wasn't about sexuality. It was about black sexuality, which makes people really uncomfortable. And it's something that pretty much isn't seen, you know, to this day in uh, mainstream comics. Well, Milestone was a, around for a while, and they put out a lot of books. So most of those criticisms of Milestone came in the, in the early stages. But as time went on, most of the, the, the biggest critics of, of, of Milestone just kind of disappeared themselves. Because the same people who were the critics were the same ones who themselves were also trying to put out books. And the quality of the books weren't that good. So... Their argument was that the books didn't come out having to do with their color or whatever, when in actuality, it was the quality of the book. You know, I always hear this thing about Milestone being unsuccessful and black comics don't sell and all this type of thing. Milestone put out hundreds of books and multi-titles over multiple years. They launched artists that are still working today, writers that are still working today. How can anybody look at that and say, oh, they were unsuccessful because they were selling black comics? You don't get the same um, negative aspect of, of, of how it went down when you start talking about, say, Valiant Comics or Legacy Comics or Crusade Comics or all these numerous companies that have came and went and came and went and came and went. Nobody's ever saying, oh, they, they, you know, they went out of business because they were black and white comics or they went out of business because it was a bunch of white guys that drew them and wrote them. But, but Milestone, it seems like they, they get this connotation because they were black comics. I just don't agree with that. It, it was working. They sold a bunch of books. They had a bunch of fans. And then the market changed and they stopped selling. Like happens to hundreds and thousands of comics since the 40s. The Milestone, I mean, they just broke the mold, literally cracked that bad boy wide open and forever changed the way, you know, we will be perceived in the marketplace.